So let's start this session. Welcome to everyone, speakers, organizers, for joining the sixth session organized by the World Bank following the last report on the poverty of education in the, in the MENA region in cooperation with the Ran, Queen Rania Foundation. We had met uh, for in six sessions in the past, and, and this is the sixth session, rather. The title of this session will be the means to prepare children to learn in early uh, childhood. We will also discuss uh, the best methodology uh, to improve uh, language skills in early years, including exposure to Arabic, especially the Fusha version, to enable students to, uh, trans uh, to move from using colloquial language to using a modern and contemporary Fusha. We will welcome all the speakers and participants, but uh, at the beginning, we will start with Mr. Basim Saad, the executive director of the Queen Rania um, Foundation. We move to Ms. Amal Davidishni, expert on child, early childhood at the World Bank, please. Thank you, Ms. Amal. Welcome to you all in the last session in a series of uh, lectures on improving language skills in Arabic. When we um, launched this uh, in cooperation with the World Bank, we had hoped that this would be a st the start of serious um, discussion on how children uh, learn Arabic. We have had six sessions on how to improve Arabic language and uh, uh, learning and to also support teachers and those who fall behind, especially in early childhood. We are joined by a host of experts and more than 100 participants have joined us over these in these sessions. You've had your own uh, uh, footprint and you have contributed uh, greatly to this debate. And uh, most importantly, we, have, we are delighted that we have established communication network with all the experts. So we are very proud that we will uh, continue at the World Bank to launch effective languages to enrich the Arabic language. And uh, we will seek to continue to uh, uh, maintain this communication. As a first step, we will be establishing a special platform at the Queen Rania Foundation that focuses on the learning of Arabic language. So please visit our website and enter your email. We want this uh, platform to be a reference to all those involved in the Arabic language learning. Um, so we hope we to establish a continuous network between all of us and to take effective steps. In conclusion, I don't want to take too much of your time. I want to thank the World Bank and the uh, a select uh, grou group of experts who have enriched us with their uh, specializations and their love for the Arabic language. Thank you very much for joining us, and we hope we'll be able to put in place uh, specific steps. Thank you very much, Mr. Basim, and uh, uh, also good luck to for the platform that you have launched. We hope we will be able uh, to meet continuously. Let us meet, uh, let us move now to Ms. Amanda Devichli, expert on early childhood at the World Bank. Uh, her time doesn't allow her to stay with us uh, for the whole time, but please go ahead, Ms. Amma. Thank you very much, Ms. Amal Arab, for that kind introduction. Um, and thank you so much, Mr. Bassam Saad, for, for the update on your next steps. Congratulations on launching the platform. Um, and thank you so much uh, to the Queen Rania Foundation and, and your whole team uh, for this terrific partnership. We're honored to work with you and others to raise awareness and support countries and improving literacy outcomes in Arabic speaking countries. Um, and we really enjoyed being a part of this series of conversations on advancing Arabic language, uh, teaching and learning. 
Since the publication of our report on advancing Arabic language teaching and learning, this webinar series has really helped to dig deeper into some of the key issues affecting children's learning outcomes in Arabic and in other subjects, uh, which rely on strong foundational skills such as literacy. Through this series, we've been so pleased to engage with many experts in the field, and we now have a deeper understanding of the issues and ways to improve Arabic language teaching and learning as you can see in the many recordings and webinar briefings, which are available on the Queen Rania Foundation's website. But there's certainly more to do if we want to eliminate learning poverty so that every child has a chance to learn and thrive. This is gonna require collective effort, collective effort from policymakers, academics, teachers, parents, practitioners, the media and others, really to take us beyond these initial discussion platforms into the, the deep action and adaptation that will be needed in each country, um, in each country's context. With today's last webinar uh, session, we have a session on fostering language development in the early years. And since I'm the early childhood development expert for the World Bank, I certainly think this is the most important uh, topic that is saved for last. So I'm so pleased to be here with you today. As we all know, a child's early years are really a crucial stage for language development. There are many opportunities within this family to support young children and make sure they get the best possible start and strong foundations. We can work with families in the home, we can work with daycares and child cares and nurseries and schools, all in communities, all of these different places we can work with and, and stakeholders to provide the right environment and conditions for children to gain the necessary pre-literacy and literacy skills so that they arrive in school ready to succeed with strong foundations. We know that the region is in need of expanding these opportunities for high quality early learning during the early years for all children. We look forward from, to hearing from experts today about fostering language development in the region, particularly as it relates to Arabic learning. I just wanna say thank you again so much for joining us today. I'm sorry I can't stay the whole time, but I'm gonna stay as long as I can and then I'll watch the recording. We very much appreciate the engagements of all participants in this series. As Mr. Basan Saad said, it's been a wonderful series of conversations with many different participants, a lot of learning, a lot of exchange, and we've received so much um, useful comments and suggestions and feedma uh, feedback from all of you and through the participant surveys. Very much look forward to today's discussion and all of the next steps to follow working together on this important agenda. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Miss Amanda, for joining us. We wish you all the best. Of course, we are proud about the depth of the sessions that we had had here online. And uh, we'll be talking about the most important stage in, uh, in learning, which is the early uh, childhood uh, development. Let us welcome the speakers who will enrich the discussion Ms. Ruba Ismail, she's Director of uh, um, Research Development at Queen Rania Foundation. We have Bushra, Dr. Bushra Qaddoura, Early Childhood uh, special, uh, Learning Specialist from the UAE, and Ms. Sadr from, um, from Bethlehem University in Palestine. She's also an expert on early childhood development. Uh, we are uh, proud that all our speakers are women in this last session. And Ms. Ruba, when we talk about a child, we talk about the family, the parents. This is the first framework for the formation of a child. And the Queen Rania Foundation has worked on, for many years on involving parents in learning, especially in the early childhood stages. So early childhood, why do we focus um, to this extent on the uh, role of parents in developing the skills of reading and writing in Arabic? Thank you, Amal. I um, go through. Okay. Okay. So to answer your question, let me. So the majority of children under the age of six in Jordan spend most of their day with their mother. And we asked parents in Jordan, in the past three days, what did you do with your child? 
6% said they read, 15% said they sang, and 19% said they talked. In this study that we did, we asked both fathers, mothers of Jordanians and Syrians, and it was nationally represented. These types of activities are critical to build our literacy skills. And currently, parents in Jordan are not doing that. So we wanted to understand for parents who are not reading, talking, singing with their kids, what's stopping you from doing all of this? A lot of them told us we don't have the time, we don't have the peace of mind, or our children are too young to understand Arabic or modern standard Arabic. And for parents who did do these activities, we asked them why they do these activities. Often it's, it builds my child's creativity, it improves my relationship with my child, um, it helps me achieve goals I have for them in the future. And um, I get approval from my spouse or my mother. Hello. As, you, as Amanda mentioned, these years, these early years are critical. There's growth in the brain that is unrivaled. This, the pace of growth is never going to repeat. And so it's critical for parents to capitalize on this, especially in the Jordanian context. And I think many of the Arab countries are similar where enrollment in early childhood is quite low. And so a parent, a mother, a father becomes a first educator for their children. And there's been plenty of research in the past um, 40 years or so showing how important a parent's role is in their child's early, um, early years. Um, in cognitive development, social, emotional, uh, language development, and these results last well into school years and beyond. So for QRF, this is a huge window of opportunity that cannot be missed, and we have to be capitalizing on what children are doing and who they're spending most of their time with. And so our vision for the early years is that every child in Jordan gets to grade one, ready to become a fluent reader. That means they have the early literacy skills they need to get to hit the ground running when they get to school. And we do this by working closely with parents to do two specific behaviors in the home, reading and talking with their children. Our approach to our programming is a behavior science-based approach. And that really means that all of our early childhood programming and that of relevant interventions on a national level come together to really immerse parents into getting to reading and talking with their kids through nudge messages. So really developing messaging based on behavior science that will encourage parents to read and talk and um, targeted programming towards different groups of parents to support them so that they can do behaviors and also providing the relevant resources, whether it's books or applications. Um, in Jordan, 65% of households don't have age appropriate books. And so really to get parents to do the reading, we also need to make sure they have these resources. I'm going to dive into these three core pieces of our programs just to give you a sense of what we've been doing. So in terms of the nudge messaging, based on a lot of the research we did of what parents are doing, why they're doing it and why they're not doing it, we have been testing some campaign material and messaging to see whether, to really ask parents, one, would you do this behavior as a result of seeing this message and how can we improve it? And some of the key findings really at a top level um, include things like parents like to see parents that look like them in the material. They prefer videos. Um, in order to get the behavior, it needs to be in a setting that looks familiar to where they usually spend time with their children, which is often in the home. So in a kitchen, in the bedroom, in the sitting room, or in the bathroom even. Um, and for the behaviors to show um, for the material to really show uh, bonds between the parents and the, the child and the immediate benefit, which is often an emotional one of joy, um, being calm, relaxed. Um, parents really aspire to these types of um, relationships with their children. And to really show the science through voiceover and the message that is being um, relayed through the material. We also have uh, been testing a model for a parent education program since 2017. Um, one 
where the objective of the program is that parent behaviors promote their children's development more holistically than language in the first five years, because we know that a child develops on a number of domains and they're all really critical in the first five years. And so this is all like a foundational course. But the key thing about this program is we've been designing and trying to figure out a low cost scalable model to um, reaching parents, delivering training material to them. And so in the past years, we've done some face-to-face, -face, we've done bled, blended and we've done pure virtual. And we've settled on this model that you really utilizes a chatbot to deliver the training material over eight weeks. Um, an online community through Facebook, we currently have over 260,000 mothers from across the region. Um, a face-to-face -face community for lower socioeconomic, moms with lower socioeconomic backgrounds. We work with two ministries in Jordan to deliver this. And it's a really light touch component just to make sure there's a community and there's learning that's being shared between the moms. And we also have resources available to mothers on um, a website. And we're looking for other mediums to relay um, a lot of the content we have. And finally, when it comes to resources that we've been working on and developing, um, we've been uh, launching a series of Kirim and Jenna applications. Uh, before QRF took an Arabic literacy focus, we um, launched a mathematics application, a socio-emotional learning application, and since then have had a focus on um, the early literacy skills. The essence of our applications is learning through play. So really we want kids to see Arabic, it's a fun language to learn. There's a lot of games, songs, very high quality graphics and, um, and really based on the science of Arabic literacy. So there's a phonics based um, alphabet, um, teaching children the, how uh, letters form words and there's also rhyming applications and we're looking to develop more applications in the future around the Arabic literacy. And of course, all of our applications are free and available anywhere to download. Um, we've got users across the Arab region and, and other parts of the globe. And so just to wrap up, what's really important for us through our approach, we want to create a national shift. And to do that, we are really looking at behavior change um, campaign. And a big piece of that is where nudge messages targeted parent programs and resources work together in unison so that we are able to achieve the national aspirations we have. But really more importantly, and one of the key aspects that's gonna either make or break this is partnerships. We know that if we want to create a national shift, there are plenty of organizations that have excellent programs. And if we were able to rally the communications and align and really try to immerse parents, surround them, and nudge them towards a behavior that we are more likely to achieve a positive result where home environments are transformed to be literacy rich. And I think that's it for me, but if anyone is interested in finding out more about the research we've been doing or the different programming, or even interested in sort of um, identifying ways to collaborate on this, then uh, please feel free to reach out. Thank you very much, Ms. Ruba Smail from the Queen Rania Foundation. After we, uh, after we hear the presentations, we can go back uh, to questions. Ms. Bushra, Dr. Bushra Qaddura, uh, you have uh, a long career uh, that in which you focused on early childhood. You worked with many national and international organizations to, uh, uh, to um, launch programs that focus on early childhood development. This expert, um, doctor, how was it um, reflected on the importance of learning at the Arabic language, especially in early years? And uh, what's the importance of uh, the investment that Arabic, that uh, countries can do to ensure that children can have uh, the best start and uh, to follow the best process here in learning? It seems we can't hear her. Dr. Bushra, can you hear us? Uh, Thank you. Yes, we can hear you. 
Thank you very much for having me. Uh, it is a great honor for me to be here along this uh, uh, important group of experts. And before I start, I want to apologize uh, uh, for my uh, a bit of a weak language, uh, Arabic language, even though uh, my colleagues at the Sharjah Academy uh, trained me for this session, for this meeting. No, it seems that so far you're speaking really good Arabic. Uh, don't worry, doctor. Arabic language and the importance of Arabic language in uh, early childhood uh, has two main important dimensions. The first dimension is a historical, anthropological, and developmental uh, dimension, and the other one is a, a more of a, uh, a knowledge and biological one. The first dimension, and through communication and uh, uh, history and uh, historians uh, like uh, Chomsky, Peter Singhi, the language of communication or language and the uh, communication skills in language are the main reason and the primary reason in building societies, civilizations, and the development of uh, mankind uh, to what we have seen today throughout history. And that is for a reason, because man is the only creature who has the ability to cooperate, to engage, to uh, engage uh, uh, flexibly uh, on a, a wide scale. What does this mean? We have animals and creatures who uh, cooperate together, but not with the same uh, flexibility. But when we use communication, whether through words or through writing or, or through any other means, we convey ideas, dreams, discoveries, and our problems. And they are all our discoveries that we are conveying to the other uh, people. And here lies the importance of cooperation. And uh, other people cooperate with us, engage with us, and thus, thus these uh, ideas can become measures uh, uh, for cooperation that would lead to change and development in the society on, a broad, uh, on a, a broad scale. This is very important for us to understand, and if we are at talking about this, this is important for all languages, but for Arabic, if we want to develop and we build with communication and cooperation with the societies close to us in order to convey the objectives and the principles and the culture and build a collective memory, then first of all, we have to build, uh, start with the local uh, Arab society before moving on to uh, the uh, international community. This is from one side. and. This is why we see that the initiative of the World Bank to reduce uh, uh, poverty in education is very important. Uh, and to reduce poverty in general is very important uh, through uh, uh, sustainable development, human development, uh, and all the initiatives. And from the biological and knowledge-based uh, dimension, and especially in early childhood years, this goes back to three main reasons. The first reason, uh, uh, lies in the characteristics of the stage of, the, of this development stage. And I'm talking about the ages from newborn to eight years old. Scientists have confirmed, all of them and all experts and neurologists have confirmed that the development of 70% oh, 70 of the development of the brain occurs in this age uh, uh, range. And there are windows of opportunity that are very important, but that are being closed during this uh, uh, stage. And this is very crucial. The second reason is that the uh, characteristics of language and the characteristics of language skills, language, in itself is a process. It is not only a subject, it is a process. It is a biological innate process that changes the structure and the, the chemicals in the brains because uh, the uh, nerve cells in uh, our brains uh, engage with uh, the people, with the communities and individuals. So thus the brain structure changes and evolves and it is a develop, developing uh, 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 process such as uh, when we drink, when we eat, so when we see. So the brain 
uh, is programmed uh, for languages. This is number one. And the second reason or the third reason is that if we want to build foundations, principles and objectives and uh, values and a collective memory, then we have to be or we have to uh, build these uh, build these principles. We have to lay the, the foundation or the cornerstone, uh, the, the foundations uh, for uh, Arabic language. Uh, in language skills, there are uh, five different skills. And according to the uh, 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 Global Reading League, there are five skills and they are, accumu they are accumulative, they are reactive and they rely on each other. And we cannot build a skill without another, without another skill. And the two main skills, which are uh, uh, phonics and phonics and uh, drawing links between the sing uh, symbols are the main important skills that are developed in this age stage. And the uh, windows of opportunity for learning for these skills are closed for those who are between six to eight years old. Yes, we can uh, do an intervention later on, but that intervention is going to face challenges. And the main skills for language is uh, uh, phonics, as I said, and uh, 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 phonics and uh, building vocabulary and definitions. And this is in order to uh, analyze, think, comprehend. And through those, we can become fluent and reach the level of fluency. I will give you an example. Teaching a language uh, 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 relies on all these skills, not only for Arabic, but for all languages. And these are the main skills for all languages. And the language teacher, whether it is an Arabic language teacher or a foreign language teacher, starting from grade one until grade 11, the teacher should be fully aware or, or fully uh, uh, have all the teacher should have all the skills should be uh, have all the skills for teaching because uh, the, the the skill uh, for uh, uh, phonics uh, takes about seven years uh, and uh, that is taught through through activities through activities uh, uh, engaging activities uh, where students uh, go out of class, they listen to the sounds of uh, animals and 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 uh, and this is tied to uh, nursery rhymes, for example. And if this skill is not developed at this age, then by grade five or grade six or grade seven, the child cannot uh, write when he is uh, uh, given dictation. And no matter how much this, the teacher uh, tries to help uh, the student, uh, the student will face difficulties. So the language teacher should go back and train the student strategies through uh, memorization or other activities so that the child will gain and acquire the skill and the phonics skills. This skill, if the child through this skill does not have the skill and if it is not tied to uh, sensory activities and visual activities, it will also take the child eight years to develop and if he does not build the skill, he will not be able to read well by grade 10. So thus the teacher has to uh, reiterate uh, uh, the, the teaching the, the child reading skills. <clears throat> the vocabulary and the definitions and building vocabulary is very important because it is important for communication and scientists uh, uh, and experts have confirmed uh, that uh, for us to be fluent uh, in a language, and be able to communicate, then we have to have a, a vocabulary of about four to 6,000 words in one year in, uh, in, in a, a class grade. So if the teacher 
spends one whole year repeating the words, then he cannot teach them. So therefore, this is why the teacher should teach the strategies of understanding the meaning uh, by uh, looking uh, for the definition and the uh, dictionary, uh, the definition of root in the dictionary, uh, linking the, the word to the root, to a picture. And for this reason, and because it is important in language, and because it starts at this age, and it is one of the two important skills upon which other skills are built on, uh, this is why they are focused in this uh, age range. And this is uh, from, or this is not my opinion, but this is according to other studies. And uh, they also have to be taught according to the age of the child uh, in a comprehensive and inclusive way that uh, uh, takes into consideration all the elements. As for what we uh, or how we can invest, uh, uh, how, we, how uh, the countries can uh, invest in uh, this important matter, what we see today is in fact that the Arab world and the Arab states are aware of uh, the severity of the problem when it comes to tying them to the social uh, uh, objectives. Uh, and this is why we see many initiatives that are multidimensional, whether they encompass uh, engaging the community or engaging the government or the policies such as the Arabic language prize or the Arabic language uh, initiative or Arabic for life initiative. These are all great uh, and useful initiatives and they have to, uh, they are important, but above all, we have to change the mentality when it comes to uh, social perceptions uh, about uh, Arabic language. And this is my personal opinion. The most important thing, if we want to, if we want to uh, solve the problem, then we have to make Arabic language as a main uh, a part of or main component of the labor market. If man uh, of a person who speaks Arabic uh, does not have a, a good income and good incentives, even if he speaks another foreign language, then we will not be able to change the mentalities because parents are going to enroll their students in uh, foreign language schools. Why? Because they have a better in a return. Uh, so this is uh, uh, the first thing that we have to do on the, uh, on the short term. We have to change the mentality and how we view Arabic language. And we also have to raise uh, the qualities or the skills of the teachers. And not only that, we have been working on that uh, uh, through many uh, programs, but we have to raise the level of the teacher uh, and raise his social stand status through uh, financial incentives. And here, there are, there, or there is a very successful initiative in Sharjah uh, developed by His Highness uh, Dr. Sheikh Sultan Al Qasimi, who is uh, a teacher, and I am uh, proud of him. He uh, gave a scholarship uh, of a high uh, financial uh, reward for the uh, female teachers uh, who graduated from uh, Arabic language, uh, religious studies, and he uh, granted them a diploma for Arabic language, uh, uh, Arabic language diploma, and uh, uh, they were, uh, these uh, graduates uh, were employed in the private sector with good, with good salaries. So now we see uh, that there is a competition between the Arabic language teachers to enroll in this program. So here lies the incentive. So also the, the other strategy or is investment. And uh, Amal, we were talking about this before, investing. Uh, financial investments in curricula to develop childhood entertainment uh, uh, products. Uh, today, Arabic children should have games in Arabic. 
entertainment programs in Arabic. I will get back to you, doctor, uh, uh, to uh, talk uh, later on about entertainment programs and how we can uh, use technology. Uh, yes, entertainment programs, because uh, this is what uh, Arabic children want. We pay a lot of money to develop uh, educational programs, but we forget that all of them are watching Netflix. And uh, I, I don't know what else. Yes, uh, thank you, doctor. We will uh, get back to you later. Uh, but I would like to give the opportunity also to our uh, guest uh, to talk about also, yes, you spoke about something very important. Uh, thank you very much for all the information that you have uh, uh, gave, given us, uh, Dr. Bushra. Uh, Ms. Maha Sadr, who is a lecturer uh, at the Department of Early Childhood Education at Bethlehem University. Ms. Maha, as we were saying, uh, children, uh, parents, uh, communication between them, is a very basic for education. Uh, uh, teaching children uh, means uh, uh, preschools, uh, classrooms, where uh, the child spends their early years with their uh, nursery teachers or uh, uh, preschool teachers. Uh, and you have an experience, experience in this. Uh, uh, when it comes to the skills uh, of the, the teachers of this uh, of preschools, uh, talk, tell us some more about this. How are the teachers trained in order to make use of the time uh, that they spend with the children in order to uh, strengthen their skills? And of course, the challenges. Uh, Ms. Maha, we don't hear you, or I, I believe you are muted. Thank you. Thank you, Amal, and thank you to all the speakers. Uh, I have been very pleased to hear everything, but uh, excuse me, I am not to uh, speak uh, in Arabic, uh, but uh, my language is very clear to everyone. We, I would, uh, we want to build uh, uh, a bridge, uh, so this is why. Uh, yes, so the subject is educational, but I will not be speaking in the modern standard Arabic. Uh, I will speak in my uh, dialect. Uh, after everything that I have heard from the speakers, it is great to hear that, uh, yes, teachers have an important role to play. Preschool teachers and parents, when we work with preschool teachers, uh, we also uh, work with uh, uh, the, the, their relationship with the parents. And therefore, <clears throat> we talk a lot about uh, the basic strategies uh, to develop uh, language skills in general and their uh, 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 relationship to independence, whether it is the independence of the personality or the dependence of learning. And the more we reinforce the skills, then the more the identity becomes clear. And uh, uh, language, Arabic language is very important for our identity and our belonging, because uh, uh, there are some people who have a sort of a schizophrenia and they question themselves, uh, who am I? Because foreign languages are uh, over overwhelming uh, and uh, sometimes uh, people are feel more proud to speak a foreign language than uh, to speak Arabic and this is impacting our identity. If I don't uh, have a, a sense of identity to my Arabic language, this impacts my self-confidence. So everything goes back to goes back to uh, identity and sense of belonging. And language is uh, part of uh, this uh, cultural phenomenon. So if I do not, uh, if I, uh, do not master my Arabic language, uh, we know that uh, there is a relationship between that and uh, um, uh, our mother tongue. The mother tongue is uh, fundamental because it is the reference of all languages. I am not against uh, learning a foreign language. Uh, the more languages I learn, the better it is because uh, this allows me to know other cultures. Uh, but my point of reference is my mother tongue. And this is an indication to the fact that uh, the, of the fact that we have to work on the importance of uh, uh, developing the mother tongue, our um, our native language, our native language. And there are many strategies, and it is very important uh, uh, to focus on this when we work uh, on this matter, and especially teachers, because uh, we want them to see 
the relationship between the various elements of the language and how uh, we have to give more attention to this. We have uh, other language uh, uh, arts uh, 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 skills such as listening, reading, writing, comprehension. But at the same time, we have uh, two more, which is uh, explaining and uh, visual uh, uh, representation. And when we look into the importance of each one of them, we can see that uh, they allow us to develop the language. Uh, and we know that they are all tied together. When it comes to explaining what I see, we see that teachers focus on the naming. What is this? What's the name of this? What color is it? Etc. But after a year or two, we have to learn or teach the names and relationships. Relations are the, what really helps in the development of language. Because as soon as I say, this is a glass, this is a um, kettle, etc. These are just uh, meanings. But I have to uh, include these meanings uh, within a framework. So when I start to establish relationships, even the understanding of students is different. So, uh, so when I ask a student, what is this? He says, it's a glass. But when I say, but when we ask the child to give us his own experience with it, things, what do you do? What, what is your relationship with to this item? Every student's response would be different. So they see different aspects. Uh, from a perspective that is different than mine and that would include uh, words and uh, different relationships. So when I talk also about present visual presentation, the child, the child is working, playing, working on uh, uh, drawing, etc. But all of these activities are good are good to be done. To, to that through the uh, what the uh, child is doing, I can understand what uh, is happening. But uh, a teacher has to encourage a student to use visual presentation in order to convey a certain message that the child has. If you look at the drawings of children, uh, you don't understand anything from them, but when a, a child tells you what they're trying to express, you start to understand the child's relationship to things and people. When we want uh, to establish uh, the culture of uh, reading among uh, uh, parents, it's very important here for have a line of communication with the parents so that we can tell them uh, uh, to tell them about the importance of uh, literacy. But we have an experiment uh, that we have done with schools here. So the classroom, for example, has 30 students. Each child is through communication with the parents, we allow them to go to libraries to buy the books they want, are interested in, and the parents would read them, uh, for uh, read these books for them. And um, we have 30 books so far. So we on a weekly basis, uh, a child can uh, lend uh, one book and take it home, and the parents would read it to them and they return it. What's the importance of this? We see that, that the library is important because many, because some teachers say, oh, we don't want to give uh, the children the book because they will tear them. But I try to establish a relationship between the child and the book, which means they will not destroy them. They will take care of them because their peers will also be using the same books. So we teach them how to care for books. There was another good development. 
that uh, some, a teacher, the teacher, uh, a parent came to the teacher and said, this uh, book uh, allowed us to gather on a family scale and discuss the book. The older children, the younger children, they all sat around to discuss the book. And this is the culture that we are trying to develop here. We have many strategies that we're working on, such as uh, story dictation of, uh, by children. So how I can hear the story about a certain idea or action, I write it in a way, and then I would uh, uh, read for the child what he has dictated. So I am writing for the child and the child is drawing and we create a story. And the story would be also part, uh, part of the library and all each child would have his own story. So we're developing the reading skills here. And we're, we want to teach children that, that reading is a very easy and, uh, and um, enjoying, enjoyable activity. But uh, usually schools look at this as a mechanical activity rather than its meaning, focusing on its meaning to children. So we want to create a population that reads, but we're not. When the child uh, takes the initiative to ask about the book, about things, how do I write my name? Who wants to write his name? You are uh, building this in this way, a good relationship uh, with the reading rather than a mechanical relationship, uh, forcing the child to read. So we are trying to create a non-mechanical relationship with reading and writing. It seems that we have lost uh, communication with you or rather your connection is bad. Miss Maha, the last idea was cut off because of technical problems. Please finish. We could not hear your last uh, statement, yes. You were talking about uh, non-traditional uh, mechanisms that uh, tie uh, children to reading and then the idea was interrupted because of the technical problem. I don't know exactly. I'm trying to build a positive relationship between children and book for children to seek the uh, learning process. So I want to focus on that rather than on mechanical learning. This is exactly the idea I'm trying to convey. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Maha. So, did it uh, break up? Am I breaking up? Yes, uh, the quality is not great. Uh, we're getting, you're cutting off. So please summarize the last point if you can. It seems uh, the quality of the connection is bad. In any case, um, we got you, we uh, got the clear idea to build a very strong relationship between students, uh, children and reading. And so part of it is that the modern um, times with the technology, the stu children um, are uh, cr creatures that like to play and interact with their surroundings. And as Dr. Bushri, Bushra said, and I go back to you, the issue of uh, toys and uh, social media, um, that give them entertainment uh, products and that are attractive and beautiful. How can we use uh, the games, especially digital games and social media games to communicate with the children and encourage them to read and write in Arabic? Dr. Busha, as I said, I believe it's one of the most important things because children, especially uh, general, ge Generation Z, have uh, two characteristics. First of all, they know 
very well social media and technology more than we do. And they are multitaskers. They do multiple things at one time. And they also have a memory, short-term memory. So we have uh, to approach uh, learning from this an angle. So we have to focus on entertainment, like songs, for example. In the, in the Arab world, there was the grandizer song. I wasn't around, but my husband continues to sing this song to this day. And all that generation remembers that song. The games, I, I call them entertainment games that, that uh, have not directed or do not have a certain message because uh, so they don't, we want something that is all in Arabic, especially to work at the Arab uh, world level uh, to launch a campaign uh, mis uh, similar to what the French did uh, in on Francais, s'il vous plaît, which means in French, please. So if we launch a national campaign, uh, with, so we have uh, media people, authors uh, that uh, produce uh, realistic uh, stories, novels that relate to the community and society in which we live in and about our societies, uh, human rights, our lives, our ideas. So through stories and gaming, gaming today is uh, very important today. So if a child heard it in Arabic, they would see it differently. And uh, parents, we, we used to say they don't read to their children. So, so to develop parents, we have to give them something they can use to such as playgrounds. We can put these, uh, uh, these ga uh, games and stories in uh, parks, coffee shops. So we have to make them available everywhere that uh, children are and they have to be in Arabic. And after that we teach the grammar and everything else, but they have to hear it and be happy to hear it in Arabic and for Arabic to have, uh, to be associated in their, in their mind with happiness, be they useful or not. Um, and if you look, we see uh, films like Aladdin, they are sto Arabic stories that come from our culture, but we are translating them. So why do they have to watch them in English? They can watch them in Arabic. They have to be entertaining. So we have to launch this national campaign to support university students uh, to hold competitions in Arabic and programs for media personalities to also launch such uh, uh, campaigns using technology and the medium. And we have to have in Arabic uh, to say something like uh, in, it's, it's nicer in Arabic. Thank you very much, Dr. Bushra, for all these ideas. Now we're opening this uh, session uh, to the public. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Uh, Ali from Kingston University, who says he would like to add that interactive uh, discussion with the children are key to developing their um, literacy um, because uh, studies in, uh, show that uh, parents who spoke to their children in early years, uh, they improved their uh, vocabulary and ability to speak and the talk has to be interactive. So to listen to the student and to engage in a mutual dialogue with the children, because reading um, by parents will not be enough for the child to acquire um, language skills. Doctor, thank you, Dr. Samuel Ali for this participation. Ms. Maha, but uh, last question is for us to reach uh, or send a message uh, to that would reach officials 
if you uh, were able to uh, direct the attention of officials in the region to one particular issue to uh, enhance uh, Arabic literacy, what would this advice be, Ms. Maha? Please turn on the microphone so that we can hear you. Yeah, certainly messaging is the messaging is difficult it's different according to the nature of curricula in the arab countries but generally speaking what you added and what the doctor added is a is an important message about being interactive because we as teacher believe if we uh, speak more and provide children with more information, then it's better. But it's important for us to listen to the children, um, uh, to develop uh, listening skills is a cultural education that we need. So listening is viewed as respect. I am listening to you, I respect you, I give you an opportunity to speak. But listening is to also learn the different cultures and that helps uh, children to talk so we always tell children uh, teachers give children the opportunity to work and talk rather than lecture to them if there's uh, an advice to education officials education officials generally speaking Sometimes the, we suffer, uh, the students, uh, I mean, teachers suffer with, uh, in their relationship with ministries because generally we, we have a strong attitude against reading and write, writing before a first grade. So generally, we say, if I want to uh, adopt a comprehensive approach with student and uh, at the age of three, and if this uh, child is interested in reading and writing, our attitude is no, let them play. And you're reading a story, and if the child asks you a question, uh, you consider it with no meaning, but no, for the child, it's meaningful. So, generally, we should tell officials that they should trust uh, teachers, that they work with uh, children according to their own needs. The, but I cannot put in place a curriculum that is puts a framework for reading and writing, and one that is unified, and, and this is um, negates the comprehensive approach. So the comprehensive approach is something being uh, implemented in many projects in the Arab world. There are, are programs known as uh, Arab Roots that recognize that each child has different uh, learning ab abilities. So it believes that this would make a difference, as you said. But on the other hand, we go back to reading because it's very important in teaching a student. The presence of books for children at home. And I go back to you, Ms. Ruba, from the Queen Rania Foundation. Do you believe that? Uh, uh, children's books production in the Arab world is sufficient and is it uh, reflected in the presence of appropriate children books at home and if not then what is required here we conducted a study last year we communicated with 100 publishing house in the Arab world in general and we wanted to know how many books are there from 
children from zero to five across the region? The short answer, they are very, very few. In conclusion, many uh, publishing houses uh, sent us uh, their catalogs and samples of books. There are approximately 2,200 books from the age group between zero to five. And if we look from zero to three, then there are even less, a lower number of books. So we communicated with all publishing houses working in this regard, and this is the number we got. Uh, perhaps the question we haven't answered so far. So what comes first? Are they looking for books and they're not finding them? But is it something coming from uh, a, a government? Uh, maybe the, they should do, do more in terms of uh, awareness campaigns that there are books and it is very important because we also have a problem is that uh, high quality books are expensive that not everybody can afford. So there are questions that we are trying to understand and find ways to uh, motivate um, the more production of, uh, of books uh, uh, talk by, by talking to illustrators uh, because uh, this uh, little children uh, cannot uh, read a language that is uh, the, uh, designed for uh, uh, is older than them they need something more of their age so there's an art uh, to children's books and its own specificity so there's a lot of work that needs to be done and we need to ask ourselves about the policies related to uh, what, what policies are there for uh, publishing houses uh, uh, for illustrators so I hope that in the future uh, there will be more research for us to understand what ways there are available to increase the number of books and increase the demand on reading. Yes, uh, probably the content of books uh, uh, should be um, in line with the uh, age that uh, they are in. Um, maybe now we cannot uh, convey the same idea to children uh, because children are probably impressed with the other things on social media or uh, what technology offers. And we really hope that your valuable messages uh, uh, will be conveyed and will be acted upon uh, by uh, the decision making, uh, educational decision making bodies. I thank you very much for uh, attending, uh, for participating in this uh, uh, discussion. And I would like to thank Ruba Samain, uh, the uh, uh, Research and Program Development Senior Manager at the Queen Rania Foundation for Education and Development, and Dr. Uh, Busha Kadura, Early Childhood Specialist in Sharjah, and also Ms., uh, Dr. Maha Saad, the lecturer at the Department of Early Childhood Education, Bethlehem University, Palestine. This was the last webinar that uh, was uh, uh, organized by um, the Queen Rania Foundation to discuss in depth uh, uh, the report launched uh, by the World Bank uh, on um, uh, uh, Arab advancing Arabic language teaching and learning a path to reducing learning poverty in, me in the MENA region. And we uh, did these uh, sessions uh, to, um, in the hopes that uh, Arabic language uh, will be uh, uh, better in the future. I, I, I was Amal uh, Arab and thank you for being with us.